Tim Davis is a freelance illustrator and a writer who's been working in the children's market for over 25 years. During that time, he has become one of the most prolific producers of hidden pictures in the history of Highlights Magazine. He's produced over 500 illustrations. In fact, I think we're up to 550. He says it's something he had never anticipated, but he's enjoying his work. He has also authored and illustrated a series of children's books and everything from The Mice of Herringbone. And then he's done some other works, Tales of Dust River Gulch and a couple others I'll have him talk about on our show today. The other thing that Tim does is he teaches non-credit courses for adults, and that is done locally, sometimes with Furman University, Greenville Tech, and the Greenville Center for Creative Arts. Tim, thanks for coming back by today. I had such a nice time last time. I wanted to make sure that the audience got to know who you are and where we can find you in the Greenville area. Great. Well, thanks. I'm glad to be back. All right. So let's talk real quick. I want to go back to highlights, the hidden pictures. How could you come up with 550? Well, that's a good question. Um, (laughs) It was only one at a time. Uh, But uh, the first one, I I think I told you last time, was really poorly done. And so they had to tutor me to tell me how to fix it. Um, But after that, I got a knack for it. And they really needed a lot. So they just kept assigning them to me. Uh, I'd been doing them since 1994. And I believe it was in 2010 I went to the, they have an annual party there, and some of, some of the illustrators are there, and they informed myself and another fellow that we were the number one and number two illustrators for hidden pictures all time. We had no idea. And so, of course, we want to know which one of us is ahead <laughs> and by how much. Uh, it turns out my friend Michael Palin uh, had done 505, and I had done 496. So I thought, I'm not going to let that stand. <laughs> Man after my own heart. Let's break it and let's win. So you're up to 550 now. Uh, Somewhere around 550. um, And you've passed everybody. Oh, who's keeping count? Uh, Right. Yeah. And you've surpassed everybody else. Hey, may I ask, how long does it take to do one? Uh, Depends on what kind. Okay. Uh, If they're just a straight black and white one page, I probably will spend two days on those. Um, If they're bigger than that, more. Like 16 hours? Eight-hour like days? That. Well, now. Not initially. Sure. But now that I know how to do them, I would try to do one in two days if possible. And do they tell you we want polar bears swimming in the ocean? Uh, sometimes they do. Uh, initially, um, they were just giving us assignments say, can you do 10? And we would come up with the subjects because they were filling up these big books full of hidden pictures. But now, mostly I do it on assignment, and they will tell me, sometimes it's like a specific scene, like, can you show uh, the New Year's parade in in China? And so that's very specific, and I do a lot of research for that kind of thing. Wow. I also want to encourage parents, if your children like art and doodle and begin to develop, nurture that in them. Mm -hmm. Because they could grow up and be like Tim Davis, a very well-known and famous illustrator. Now, Tim, so the whole idea of creating this and then finding the hidden pictures, have you ever done one and thought, ah, they'll never find this? Well, you'd always hope that. Um, (laughs) You do want them to find it, but not quickly. Okay. Uh, In fact, I always thought the biggest challenge was, can I hide a very large object in that scene that takes them a long time to find. Because they're so used to looking for something small, they miss the elephant in the room, so to speak. Exactly. So every once in a while, you can do that. And that's like, there's a special pleasure in that. Ah, very good. (laughs) So next time you're at the doctor's or dentist office, you pick up that Highlights magazine, you'll be looking at Tim's work. Now, Tim, I got to say, not only are you doing that, but the fact that you're teaching drawing for kids. Tell me a little bit about that, please. Yes, I started uh, teaching over at GCCA, Greenville Center for Creative Arts, uh, last January and uh, started with teaching illustration for adults. And then they said, we'd really like you to like dip down a little bit. I'd had students down to 12 before, but now I'm going to take students that are younger than 12. And we're just going to be teaching some basic drawing classes over there. You know, it's a wonderful program. I've actually had them on the show before. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what they're doing is just opening up the the world of art to people who may not have such opportunities. And then you're also at Greenville Tech Buck Mickle Center. 
Yes. I also teach a primarily writing class. Okay. We do talk about illustration one of the four weeks, but I've been teaching writing for about 20 years as well. So um, as you know, I've, I've had some books published, some stories published. So that was sort of the basis on which I've started teaching writing. Well, let's talk about some of the books. I, If I remember correctly, I think there are seven children's books and then, of course, many articles and children's publications. So was the five-book series The Mice of Herringbone? Tell me about that. Yeah, the Mice of the Herringbone just came to me on a whim. In essence, I just had this idea for a story, and I wrote it down and then submitted it. It took several rejections, as most <laughs> most stories do, uh, before it was accepted. But then eventually, uh, BJU Press picked it up. And after that one book, I was doing school presentations with it. Uh, a friend of mine was a teacher. I went into the class, and they said, well, what what's going to happen in the second book? That, you were like, I don't know. Let me go home and think about it. <laughs> so, yes, you tell me what's going to happen. Uh, and actually, they did give me ideas. They said, I think this should happen with this character, and they should go here. So I wrote the second book, and I did incorporate a couple of their ideas. And then after the second book, uh, sort of like the, the publisher was saying, well, maybe you could do a third book because three is better than two. And and I thought I'd be all done. And then like a few years later, I had this other idea, and it got so big it didn't fit in one book. So the last one is a two-book story. And is that the uh, Tales from Dust River? Well, that's a separate one. Oh, it's a separate one. Um, Tell me about that. Dust yeah. River, is it Gulch? Yes. Gulch. Tales from Dust River Gulch was sort of on a totally different uh, angle there. Um, I've always liked animal stories, and that's this is a, animals who basically run this little western town. I love small towns, and so this just seemed like a way to, to tell fun stories. They're just really fun homey stories with a little bit of danger, a little bit of like uh, Mayberry style danger. Uh, the rattlesnake comes to town. That kind of thing, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then I believe, did I read that you're doing something with the Swamp Rabbit Trail? Yes. Uh, what what happened was after uh, doing Dust River Gulch Tales, I got ideas about how I could apply it to real life when we moved closer to Traveler's Rest. Traveler's Rest is sort of a little bit of a frontier town if you look at their history. And so I was it beginning was the stopping point between the Carolinas going up to the mountains for cool in the summertime. It exactly was. Yeah. And there's a lot of history there that's kind of hidden away because of the trees and things. But mm -hmm. if you if you're local yokel, you kind of know where to go. Well, and there. Yeah, there's there's people you find some of the old timers and they have really interesting stories. So I started trying to gather some of those and then rewrite them in a, more of a children's format with a little bit of fantasy mixed in. So that's where Swamp Rabbit Tales came from. All right. And when will those be published? Or are they currently published? Some are out uh, there. You can find some on the uh, on my website, links to some of those. Um, some of them are going to be published in Traveler's Rest Here, which is a publication, a digital publication about TR. All right. Very good. Well, Tim, I got to say, with all the things you've got going, I'm surprised you have time to, to do much <laughs> else. But I got to say, it is so fun and exciting to see and to meet you and to see what's going on there. And I know that if people want to find you, we can always find you on Facebook, that yes. Tim Davis Creations. And then, Tim, what I'm going to do is put the other websites so if folks know that you can come and speak. Tell me real quick about the speaking that you do. Is it primarily to schools? I like to speak to kids a lot in schools. And what um, is your message to kids? Keep drawing, keep doodling, um, don't give up? A little more than that. Okay. I'm, I, I'm trying to tap into their creative side. Uh, of course, since I do a lot of hidden pictures, a lot of that is about observation. What do you see when you look at something? And I'm trying to train them to see things better, look more carefully at things, and then sort of use that as a springboard for storytelling through either artwork or even writing. Very good. So if anybody, a teacher that's listening, mm -hmm. it'd be wonderful to have you come for a school event. And then under the Tim Davis creation, is that where the illustration Prim yes, primarily that would be illustration. Also, anything that I've written would be under Tim Davis Creations. Do you do commercial work? Um, well, I, I do have other clients. Um, for one, kind of unusually, I work for the state of New York for their maple production uh, industry. Wait, maple syrup production? Maple syrup production, yes. I love that. I'm well, from New York, okay. <laughs> so that's why. Uh, upstate New York, what part? Uh, yeah, upstate, uh, western New York is okay. where I'm from, and I got connected to some people who are involved with Cornell's education program, 
And so I've been doing that for about eight years. Wow. Look at a man of many talents. I can't wait to check out your Facebook page. And thank you so much for coming by the studio. My friends, my guest today has been Tim Davis. He is an illustrator and a writer, and he's been working in the children's market for 25 years. You know him for the producer of Hidden Pictures. That's in Highlights Magazine. But as you can tell, we'll find him in a lot of other places. So, Tim, I'll put this online, and I look forward to having you back in the studio again. Hey, thank you, Deb.